Good morning, friends and neighbors. Oh, I feel so much better now. I woke up not feeling so good today. Um, a friend of mine for the last four years has been ill with cancer. And uh, actually she found out literally the same week, March, 2020, that the pandemic started and as if cancer is not complicated enough, she found out at the same time where we were all having to isolate. So anyway, I found out today that she's in hospice and that brings up a lot of feelings. Sadness, of course, guilt, because I feel like I didn't do enough. I know I didn't do enough. Um, all those things and it sort of gets you feeling panicky in your chest she's younger than I am uh, all those feelings so I had to get out of the house because the thing that helps me the most is to walk and uh, usually when I do a tour I have a focus like I, I know where on the map I'm gonna go uh, because my intent is to walk out and uh, take a tour but today the intent was a little different it was just to get the heck out of the house but so I don't know where I'm gonna go I'm on Stewart Avenue right now that's uh, that building right there it used to be Henry Hardin's grocery store and I'm walking north uh, Wow look over here this house was renovated uh, when I got here that's 3185 this one was a mess 3181 and this one was burned out 3175 but they've all been renovated uh unfortunately the big trees that were out in front i guess they had to take them down oh wow this one's for sale now 3175 is for sale there it is uh not even a year ago this was just an embarrassment to look at and uh, whoever owned it um it was literally this side was burned out, but people were living in here. And uh, there were children and they don't have a yard because it's all cement. And, but as soon as they started building these townhomes here, right across from the church and from across this little yellow place at 3166 that will definitely be gone at some point soon. As soon as they started building those, I said, oh, well, they're gonna have to improve these. And they have. But talk about living right on the street. But it does look better. I would imagine that'd be a hard sell unless somebody buys it to rent it, you know? But I certainly wouldn't want to live right on the street like that. I'm at in front of this church. I'm on the corner of Oak Drive and uh, formerly Stewart Dogwood right here. And then across the street, I know that used to be a flower shop back in the day, in the 50s or 60s. All right, well, I was gonna walk across Stewart. I'm debating, do I wanna walk right and go past Melvin's house? I don't think I've ever filmed Melvin's house. I probably have. I'm at the point where I don't remember what the heck I've filmed. All right, I'm gonna cross the street and go down Oak. Um, this street is not particularly interesting to me because, you know, none of the, what I would imagine original homes are still here. I don't know what's in here now, but it's, I think this was built in the 50s or 60s. This is 3145 Dogwood. And I think the flower shop was there and then clearly other businesses were back here. I can't remember if I walked down this street or not, but I long for the coolness of the park, so I'm gonna go there. But um, there's 713, these are all townhomes. I think these were built in the mid to late 90s, if I had to guess. Uh, you know, any part of town that has, well, townhomes, they just don't interest me, to be honest, because people come and go so quickly here, as they say in the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy said it in The Wizard of Oz, and so there's not as much 
No, I mean, I could be wrong. For me, there's not as, as much history here as a house that would have been here 80, 80, 90, 100 years. Here's 722. Um, I'm sure that this was quite the event when these were built back in the day because, you know, when you live in old houses in Hayville, to see new townhomes go up probably, especially back in the 80s, when uh, Hateville needed renovation, needed a little tender loving care, these would have been welcome and impressive. But they're not my favorite. I always prefer original homes. So we're coming down into Lake, I always forget. I live on Walnut and behind me is Lake. I think behind me is Lake Drive and what is this? Lake Street, Lake Avenue? The street sign's not even there, so I can't tell you. The street sign for Lake has gone from here and it's also gone at the top of the hill at North Avenue. It's just not there. Oh boy. Here's 3174. It's backlit, so it's a little difficult to see, but I'm gonna walk up this way. Whew. I needed this. So you know when you get bad news, for me, it lands in my stomach and it makes me feel nauseated. And I'm just so terrifically sad for my friend. And at the same time, I realize that I sort of distanced myself from the experience because I lost my sister to the same kind of cancer. And my sister was only 35 years old and when that happened, that just changed me as a person and changed my life and how I live it and um, oh, just so many things. And it was not easy, to put it lightly. It was the most difficult situation I've ever gone through in my life. 3186 right here. And then what is that cute little brick house right there? It has a street number above it but it's heart 30 oh. it's above the door but I can't read it 3188 yeah that's a cute house and then this beautiful magical road goes up to North Avenue school we've got an entrance to the park now so I get this gut feeling and When you feel like that, at least me, I realize I have a lot of choices I can make to make myself feel better. And many of us will do something like, oh, I feel anxious, I feel scared, I feel that awful feeling in my stomach, I just got bad news. I'm gonna smoke a cigarette, or I'm gonna drink coffee, or I'm gonna have a, I wanted to have a Coca-Cola because I don't smoke or drink coffee or alcohol. A lot of us rely on alcohol. It's a beautiful park they put here a few years ago. And I wanted a soda really bad, but I gave up soda in January and I don't want to ruin that trend because I'm much healthier for it. So I said to myself, take a walk, Dewey, take a walk. Here's Campbell Circle and the houses you can see in the distance along Campbell Circle. 694 these beautiful houses up here i think they're some of my favorite locations here i would love to be a grandparent in one of those houses send my grandkid down here to play i don't have a grandkid not yet anyway i'm rambling but cofield park brings me comfort especially the other end where we're headed and i know i've walked this before so this is a repeat Forgive me for that. I found an article from the 80s about a kid who set fire to the classrooms of Joe Wells Elementary School when I looked up his address, because in the article it gave his address. I forget his name. But I often wonder what did that act way back in the 80s as a kid how did that act affect his life? Where is he now? Pretty certain that was the house. I'd have to double check. It could have been one on either side. That's what, 688. But I think that's what the article said, where he lived. 
Luckily, the whole school didn't burn down. Coalfield Park is beautiful, and there are so many people that have moved into Hateville that I suspect don't even know this park is here because they go to their houses and then either over to the airport where many people work or on Metropolitan to I-85 and into Atlanta because we're definitely a bedroom town now. See, you can see the cleared out behind. You can see the townhomes behind these homes now. So it's still, a, it's a sleepy town, but it's not like it used to be where people had physical and emotional uh, investment in the town. And that's changed all over the country. People are just so busy that they're not even involved or involved or aware of what makes the town they live in run or even as a matter of fact who's running it this tree fell down a few years ago i've shown this before and they cut it so it has a little bench and then this and then they made a little cute little seat here it used to have wheels and look like the flintstones car What a magical place to play as a kid. And I know many of you have. Every time I see this creek, I think about how so many of you say, oh, I followed that creek all the way down to Cleveland Avenue. Just so grateful that city fathers thought to put this park here and not develop it back in the day. That's one thing we're very lucky about in this town. I mean, a lot of us can complain about all the development happening, but we've got this park, we've got Jess Lucas Park, and we've got uh, what used to be called Master Park. It is now John Lewis Park. We're so fortunate in a two and a half square mile town, something as small as ours is, that we have the parks that we have. What a blessing. We may not have a grocery store, y'all, but we have three parks. And then like lots of little parks with playgrounds on them in the neighborhoods for kids. So I am grateful for that. The creek is running along to our left here. Someone on the channel asked the other day, is the Scout Hut still there? Absolutely, yes indeed, there it is. As long standing as that is, never been inside. I've never um, yet been to an event or anything like that there, but that's a nice Scout Hut. That certainly was built at a time when the city had the money and resources to do that sort of thing. I hope you're enjoying this walk. I can feel my heart rate going down and the anxiety in my stomach subsiding a bit. You know, many of us are at the age, I'm 56, coming up on 56. So many of you that are members of this channel are, I would say like 10, 20 years older than I am in general. Uh, so, as far as a loss of peers, I would imagine many of you have been experiencing that for a while. I think that when you get into your 50s like I am, that's kind of where it starts. Where you start hearing, you know, this friend is gone, that friend is ill. And I spent a fair amount of time in my life thinking about this time of life that's coming and certainly not looking forward to it, but trying to except that it is a part of life. Scout Hut, 635. That's the answer to my question. Lake Avenue, there it is. 
I was wondering. So behind my house off Walnut, it's Lake Drive. This is Lake Avenue. And then we are at South Gordon Circle and there it goes this way. And This is 634 in front of me. Let's go this way. I didn't set out to do it, but now I've been doing this so long, I sort of like, oh, that's 3046. I'm sort of like, well, I've done this much. Let's make sure we cover every street. So that's the intent now. Oh, I love walking down here. It's uh, the Barnett's former home is down on the left-hand side, but right there, it's probably right now at this time in the morning, close to 80 degrees. And you come down this hill and it drops to 75 at least creek to the left you can see through the trees barnett the barnett's house there's 3042 gordon circle so quiet back here how many of you rode your bicycles down this hill I like to imagine what it must have been like over here before the highway came through in the early 60s you can hear it over there but you know I've heard many people say this it sounds like a waterfall listen That's not terrible at all. Here's 3040 and 3038 up on the hill there. And there's the road that goes down into where the Barnett's house is. I don't know who lives there now. 3038 through me, because you can see these other houses, they have driveways that go up to their homes but 3038, this beautiful little cottage on the hill, no driveway. I mean, clearly it must be behind there, but I'm like, where? Where does it come from? I haven't figured it out yet. Anybody know how you get, how you park at 3038? That one doesn't have a number on the house that I can see or the mailbox, but let's see. And there's some work happening at this one. And we're coming up to Cofield Drive, which I've learned from a map that Bruce Palmer, I think it was Bruce Palmer that drew, drew it for me. Mm, or it could have been Oh, who's the other gentleman that, I don't think it was Bruce, Bruce Palmer. Bruce Palmer, no, I've met so many people in person recently uh, without my research in front of me. Uh, Gillespie, Charles Gillespie. No, that's the dad. John, John Gillespie. I think uh, he told me, this house faces Cofield. He drew a map of this area from when he was a kid and before the highway came through and the bridge um, this road went down and the Suddeth family had their house down there on the spot that the highway actually is today. And I've walked, I've gone across there. I have a, a walk where I went across Cofield, across the bridge, but here we are at 629 on the corner, 627, 625, and then going on up the hill look at imagine mowing that lawn right here what a beautiful house sitting there majestically up on the hill all right i could walk up that hill but i'm not well you know what i will i I'm going to walk this way and walk up the hill because I'm not sure I've done that yet. 
So we'll walk by this beautiful house. That's number 626. 624. I like these row of houses over here. I just think they're so quaint and beautiful. Here's 622. All of these are brick. This is the style house you saw most in Hapeville, built in the 40s. 622. Coming back up on Lake Avenue. Wait a minute. What did we just come off of over there? Oh, that's right, Gordon. And then Lake is here. There's 621. Let's see. I'm gonna continue this way. I know I haven't gotten that yet, but maybe I'll turn around. Here's 616, right on the corner of Lake and Cofield. It's a beautiful day today. 617. All these houses are pretty well kept over here, well maintained. 615. Six sixteen right there, I already said. Six fourteen. I love a brick house. I don't mind if you like a I I like a, a, a natural brick, but when it's painted white, I also love that. 612 is still natural brick right up on the hill there. 613. and tucked back in there. What is that, 611 I have to guess? Let's see what the mailbox says. It doesn't. It's not on the house either, but I'm thinking that's 611. Yeah, it has to be, this is 610. Oh. And we're coming up to Dogwood Drive. Dogwood Drive is a tongue twister. You see this a lot in Hateville. I don't know, I've never lived in a town or a city. Like you would think this would happen in New York City or uh, other large cities, but this sort of thing, and I'm, I don't work for Georgia Power, so I don't know what it is, but what is that? We see that all over and sometimes they're hanging so low that you've got to walk around them if there's a sidewalk, but I love this town, but sometimes there are things that make me go, why, why is that like that? But that's clearly a Georgia Power thing, right? They just wind it up and hang it there. And I just think it's so ugly. And sometimes you have the misfortune of having that sort of thing hanging right in front of your own house. <laughs> I. I'm all about order and a place for everything and everything in its place, and that doesn't fit that sensibility. Here's um, 3021 facing Dogwood Drive. For those of you that lived on Stewart Avenue, what was that like for you? Living on such a busy street, and the bus stop is there on the corner, and then also facing the street at bus stop number 95 is this house. And then you got Mount Zion down there. And from what I hear, there used to be a Dairy Queen there. Boy, do I wish there still was. And I can't see these addresses because I'm not close enough. This is 3022, 3026. I might as well just continue this way. 
So I'm not sure I've ever even walked on this end of Stewart to film it. Watch your speed. My research has shown a lot of instances that illustrate that this stretch of Stewart Avenue, there's 3030, there's 3021. This stretch of Stewart Avenue for many, many decades was known in Atlanta and beyond as quite the speed trap. You did not want to make the mistake of speeding past city limits right there. The cops would get you. I can imagine I'm sitting right here at Cofield waiting to pull out and get you. That house back there is 3027. I know one of you mentioned that you grew up there. And then after this little house here, there are these, I call them new builds, but they're probably at least 20, 25 years old. 3040, 3044, and whatever that one is on the corner there. And this is 3035 and 3045 back there. Almost 100 years ago, 90 years ago, uh, Betty Barnett's family, the McCords, owned one of these properties. I can't remember which one because I, I found an article from like 19, gosh, 30 or 32, something like that, where one of uh, Mr. McCord, whichever one he was, Betty's father, was backing out here and got hit. And it made the paper. That's number 3048. And you all remember this corner of Mount Zion and Stewart, uh, where you would go get your Christmas trees every year. Was it the Exchange Club, the Lions Club? I forget what organization sold the trees here, but that's where it happened. How convenient for whoever lived in 3049, right? And 3051, they could just walk across the street, get their Christmas tree, and it'd be in the window in minutes. Gloria Holder, when I went to visit her a few uh, weeks back, her family home was up there on, uh, oh, Grove? Yeah, Grove, Grove, Grove Circle. And she would tell stories of having to come down here and catch the bus and missing it. She told me a story about that, which I thought was great. So she made an effort one particular day to actually be on time and the bus driver and everyone on the bus gave her a standing ovation for being on time. I love that story. There's 3053. Can't see the number of that one. It's right on the corner of Sorry, I said Mount Zion. Did I say Mount Zion? That's Moreland. Moreland goes up that way. 3055. That one's hidden by trees. I can't really see the number either on the house or the mailbox, but we are at Gordon Circle now. There we go. My friend Charles grew up right around the corner there, part of his childhood, but the majority of his uh, Hateville childhood, he recalls living on Gordon Circle across from his grandparents. Look at this. This tree's been here a while, folks. There's 3101 right on the corner. That one is 3102 back there behind. And 3106, which always stands out because of their uh, gold accents. And they've got a shiny gold doggy in the front yard, which catches the light this time of day which is very pleasing to the eye. And then next to it is 3108. And the 
that beautiful house, which I guess would be 3110. Doesn't look inhabited right now, but what a lovely old Georgia style home, right? Back to this side, back to 3101. 105. Look at the magnolia tree in their front yard. I can smell it right now. This is a newer build, 3109. get a better view of this house. It's old porch on the front. Thirty-one thirteen. She could use a little love. Thirty-one fourteen, with the big tree, nice tree in the front yard. This is one of my favorite designs. I love a house with a swooping roof. That's thirty-one twenty-four, and it's got a big uh, apartment building in the back that looks like it was built in the forties or fifties. You can see it from Jackson Street back there. It has a separate entrance. There's the newer build, thirty-one fifteen. 17. Look at the beautiful um, plants in their front yard. The landscaping is lovely. Wow. I don't see the number. Oh, 3123. And Thomas lives there at 3125. This old house is 3128. Kate and Pete live there. They own a bicycle shop in Atlanta and here in Hapeville. Well, that freaked me out right there. I don't know what this house number is, but that little doll on the porch caught my eye. I have no idea what's in this building. 3135, well now I do. Can you believe it? I've driven by here so many times in six years and never realized that this was a law firm. 3135 Miller Williams Law Group. No idea. Do you remember that being built? What was there when it was built? And up on the hill here is 3140. And we've done a full circle, we're back to Oak Drive. Across the street. You understand that little house right there at 31, what does that say? 49? I'm relying on my long vision. Uh, I think that one is a uh, crash pad for Delta folk. I've turned right on late on uh, Jackson just because I wanted to show you this. Here's 3187. We just came from there. 3158. We're at Jackson and Woodrow. One of our members grew up in this house. I forget the person's name, but this is 3166. I filmed that a while back. But right across the way, two homes being built on this lot. I mean, I'm sure back in the day there must have been homes there, but for the last six years that I've been here, it was an empty lot. And every time I walked by, I was like, how with the boom going on, is this lot not being developed? Well, it is now, directly across from 3170, which was Ed Milton's house back in the day. And then 3191, and we're to Lake Drive. 
and Jackson Street, but that's what's happening all over Hapeville now. Somebody told me that used to be a duplex. You can kind of tell. And $31.99, our friend Permelia lives there. I think that was her family home as well. Beautiful little house. All right, and we'll stop here at Lake Drive with a view of this big old house that was built a couple years ago.